Hello there, Maverick Traders. This is Rob Reinhold. This is The Trading Room, and we are just getting done with October monthly options expiration. So that's another month in the books. We will do profits on Mondays. We will do our profit distributions on Tuesday, and then level advancement as usual on Wednesday. So let's get into it. In this session, we're going to look back at the week. We'll take a look at some of the news and look at all the market returns. Then we'll see, do we have a different score? Yes, we do have a different score and things got a lot worse this week. And then as always, we are always looking for setups. I've got some bulls, some bears, and some sideways stuff for you. Disclaimer. This video was created for professional stock and option traders. Maverick Trading is a proprietary trading firm that employs professional traders around the world. Our traders trade firm capital and keep 70 to 80% of profits they generate. All trades and analysis in this video are for professional traders only. If you are interested in becoming a professional trader for Maverick, click the apply button in the video description. Let's get ready for the week. Last week we saw the market support of 43.35 was broken on Wednesday. So once that broke, we said the next level is 42.20 and that's literally where we closed on Friday. We talked about how the bond market is really leading the stock market, and we saw the bond market all the way up to 5%. Well, not exactly 5%, but 4.99%. That was the top of the bond market. And then on Friday, the bond market actually pulled back quite a bit, down to like 4.91, 4.92. But the market was already in a route. Typically, when the bond market comes down, the stock market has been recovering. There was a sign on Friday that the bond market came down and the stock market could not recover. It means there's a lot of cascading of selling and probably some margin selling going into this, pushing this market even lower. We did have some mixed earnings reports last week. We had decent reports from the banks, but the market reaction to their reports was not good. They all gapped up and then they all have traded down, down a few percent from there. Then we did have some regional banks this week and those regional banks dropped by 20 to 30%. So financials definitely didn't have it well Netflix had a great killer report, gapped up about 12% and then ran the next day, while Tesla, for the first time since 2019, missed their revenue and earnings targets and the stock tumbled. So overall, I'm going to say more bearish than bullish here on the earnings side. As far as the economic reports go, I just want to point out two reports here. The first report is the retail sales report. The market has been hoping that the retail sales would cool off a little bit. It's one of the things that the Fed points to this is, hey, the economy is still strong. The consumer is still buying. The forecast was for 0.3%. It came out at 0.7. And they revised last month's higher up to 0.9 and 0.8. That number was just amazing. And the market struggled after this report. Remember, we're in the place where too much good news is actually bad news for the market. And then on Thursday morning, we got unemployment claims. That number below 200,000 is a very, very low number. And it's not what the Fed wants to see as well. And the market really tumbled after that. We did hear from Chairman Powell on Thursday, and he said that this market and this economy might need a few more rate hikes before we're done. Again, we saw that cascading selling really pick up on Thursday and Friday. Before we jump into the market charts, let's take a look at last week's trades we put out. Last week, we had a bearish call on GE General Electric, and we said it was having a nice little bear rally pattern, made a new low, bear rally was turning down, and sure enough, GE lost 3% this week. We have a 106, 110 bear call spread. We just need this to close, stay weak for another week. This is going to be a very nice gain for the week. Next up, we had Etsy. Now Etsy, even though consumer was the weakest sector for the week, Etsy decided to have two fantastic days and then spent the rest of the week giving it all back. So Etsy did not break lower like we were hoping, but this is what I love about using a spread. We have a 60-65 spread on this trade. And at one point, this stock was all the way up above 70. We positioned size for max loss, saying, hey, whatever happens is going to happen. It could have taken off to 80. We didn't care. It didn't really matter on our trade. However, with these spreads, you can wait out this short-term volatility. As you can see, this stock closed all the way back down to 
to where it almost started for the week. We've got one more week to go. Any more weakness, this is going to end up being a very profitable trade. And the first week, it looked dreadful the first two days. Let's move next to Western Digital, a trade that was dreadful. We had the 43-46 diagonal call spread. So the diagonal call spread was saying, hey, look, you just have to not go down. You just have to not go down. And this one was not listening. This trade was cut on Friday for a loss. So the 46 expired Friday, worthless, but our longer dated 43 still has some value in it, but it was not worth what we paid for it. So this one ended up being a loss. And since it's broken down below its 50, we no longer want anything to do with it. And then next on to Chevron, we had a slightly bullish butterfly on Chevron, 167.50. So 167.50 was our midpoint. And you can see when we put this trade on, it was down here. We said we think it's going to drift higher, but not break out. And that's pretty much exactly what this did. This trade still has one more week on it. As long as Chevron stays in this area, we are very happy. We are going to be nicely profitable on this trade. So Chevron did exactly what we wanted it to do. Let's look into the market. Let's take a look at all the charts and all the performance. And then we will start to look towards the week ahead. Dow Jones down 1.5%. S&P down 2.4%. That's a pretty ugly week for the S&P. The Q is down 3%. The Russell, surprisingly, the Russell wasn't down 4 or 5%. The Russell has been absolutely garbage. And you can see it actually didn't go down as much. It had a much better day on Friday than the rest of the markets. But early on in the week, it underperformed all of the markets. Oil at the end of the week was flat. We were up at one point. We were down at one point. Ended up pretty flat. And gold has the second consecutive week. Last week, gold was up 5.5%, another 2.5%. That's an 8% move in two weeks. That is a giant move in the gold market. Now, I've got three charts I really want to take a look at. And the first one is the S&P chart. We talked about how this level here, this level was really key. And when we broke below that on Wednesday, I came in and I said, hey, look, I thought, I thought we were going to move higher. I was talking a lot about the September 1st to October 15th time period which is the statistically weakest time in the market. And I said, once we are done with that, I think this market recovers. On Thursday, I admitted I was absolutely wrong. I was wrong on the call. Now look, I did say last week, that was my opinion. And then I can't trade my opinion because the chart isn't confirming what I'm saying. Now I wasn't as bearish as I should be, but I was still leaning a little bit to the bearish side. And it ended up being a decent week for me by the end of it. Now, that's where trading with the chart is better than trading with your opinion. Making money when you're wrong is really nice as long as you tr trade the charts. We talked about how after that 42.20 was the next level. And you can see we are right there. We are right there. And this could easily be broken on Monday. I want to bring in an interactive chart here just so we can really take a look at where this S&P is. Because once we break this level, the question is, where is the next level of support? So 42.20, and you can see I've drawn the line here at 41.70. We've got a couple of tops here, and we got a retest here. I think that is our next level, 41.70 is what we're looking for. Or our next level for our next target, maybe even down to 4165, somewhere in here. As you can see, that's still another 60 SP points. That's another one and a half percent. With the way we closed on Friday, it is highly likely that we get a negative open on Monday. Now, if we have a big gap down, let's say we gap down one, one and a half percent, I think that might be a decent time to cover your shorts and to take any short-term longs you're going to do. If we don't gap down on Monday, I think we are looking for at least one or two ugly days at the first part of next week. And this 4170, I would not be surprised if it was pierced intraday and then recovered by the end of the day. Everything is pointing lower in this chart. And the other charts that I brought with me today were the 10-year bond. And you can see the 10-year bond Peaked out here at 4.99%. We could go all the way back down to 
and it would just be a very small bull pullback. The market is really not going to get any relief from the bond market unless we really come down into like the 4.7, 4.6 area. And the last chart I've got here is the VIX. The VIX is something we don't look at too often. It's pretty much worthless until we get to times like these. Why is it worthwhile? This is the fear index. This is how many people are going out and buying puts and calls on the S&P 500 futures contract. This is where people go to buy insurance for their portfolios. When the VIX is high, it's telling you that people are starting to get worried. And you can pretty much draw a really nice line from charts from highs in the VIX to bottoms in the markets. We want to go back, take a look at, you know, March 15th was a spike in the VIX. It was probably a low in the market. We had May 3rd or 4th, another one, and then May 20th, another one. As you can see here, we're starting to really ramp up here. And we are not quite at what I call peak panic. Peak panic was like back here, up at uh, 30. We're at 21 here. We're at 21. We will probably not make a major low until this VIX gets up into this 26 to 30 area. If that happens, I think that is what's called a capitulation bottom. This is where everyone who's on margin gets flushed out. This is anyone who is going to sell, they go ahead and panic and sell. We get these capitulation bottoms where the market can fall really dramatically for a very short period of time. One or two days where it's just really intense all day long. Once we get up to this 26 to 30 area, I think at that point, then you want to stop looking at adding on any new bearish trades and start taking some profits and wait for that capitulation bounce to come. We will be talking about the VIX every single day this week in our end of day videos. We're going to be keeping a very close eye on it. The VIX is something we only keep an eye on in situations like this. The rest of the time, completely ignored. So let's talk about this next week. We got that 42.20 at support. We close there on Friday. We'll see if we can hold it next week. I think we open up below it to where it's already been broken. After that, 41.70 is the next support. Take a look at this earnings week. We have so many major, major reports. Microsoft, Google, Meta, Amazon. These four stocks, they are pretty much like 25% of the S&P. That's pretty much what the weighting is now in the S&P. If these stocks have good earnings reports, it could save the market. Let me just point out that whenever you need to save something, it means it's in danger. I hope everyone knows that right now this market is in danger. The VIX is spiking. There are no bounces. There is heavy selling. This is where we get these tumbles. These tumbles that could easily happen over one or two days where the markets could fall 3 to 5% in just a short period of time. The market is in trouble. The only thing I think that could save this market at this moment are earnings. If Microsoft, Meta, Amazon, and Google blow out earnings and the stocks are rewarded for it, this will be the market low. If they don't do that, I'm sorry. We are continuing to be in a bear market and we most likely go lower. So if any of you are hoping on the bullish side, I think you will know by probably Wednesday after the market. Because look, if Microsoft, Google, and Meta are terrible, Amazon can't save it. it it's not going to save it. That's not enough. We need pretty much three out of the four to have really nice earnings report or this market is going to be heading substantially lower. Next week, there's really one or two things on the schedule here. I wanna take a look at advanced GDP. I want you to take a look at that number, 4.3%. That is what the third quarter is projected to have been for GDP growth. That is a really strong economy. The Fed does not want 4.3% growth. They want like 2% growth. If this comes out at 4.3, 4.5, close to five, boy, the market is not going to like that. Bonds will head higher. Stocks will go lower. If this comes out at, you know, 4.2, 4.3, there may be a little sigh of relief, but look, it's still way too hot. Even if it comes out at 3.7, that's still too hot of an economy for the Fed. 
We do have Jerome Powell speaking on Wednesday after the market is already closed. So again, you've got Chairman Powell, you've got Meta, and you've got stocks like Boeing and IBM. Thursday morning should be the real test of this market. On Friday, we do have the core PCE price index. So this is the Fed's favored inflation measure. You could see it was cooling down to 0.1, it's supposed to heat back up to 0.3. If it comes out at 0.4, again, this market is not going to like that one bit. Has the market changed its score? And the answer is yes. Last week, look where we were last week. We were above the 20, below the 50. And the lines were still going down. We were up here at like a negative 1.5. You could see here on Wednesday, we had to go down to a negative 2. And then here we are down to a negative 3. This is where I say the market's in trouble. It is a negative three technically. And take a look at these candles. They are nasty candles. There is not buying in there. They're opening up and they're going down all day long and not bouncing and closing at lows. That is telling you that there's likely to be a capitulation move happening where we do have a tumble over a short period of time. Have you been trading in the markets for at least two years? Are you starting to see some decent progress? Is that progress so small because of your limited account size? Maverick Trading is a prop firm that provides capital to profitable traders. You trade a minimum $25,000 account and keep 70 to 80% of the profits. After two consecutive profitable months, you move to a $50,000 account. As you keep progressing, you will be able to trade six and seven figure accounts. To learn more about trading for Maverick Trading, either click on the apply card in the top left Click apply at the end screen or click the link in the description to watch our recruiting video that explains more about Maverick and prop trading. If you like what you see, apply for a position and meet with our recruiters. Are you our next trader? Let's take a look at all the sectors. Last week, there were two sectors that were positive. We saw energy and consumer staples were the only two positive sectors. And then everything else was down pretty much the same as the market. So the market was down two and a half to 3%. So everything was down two and a half to 3%. You pretty much have to say, you know what? They just did what the market did. Really just a market performer. Let's point out the things that did better and the things that did worse. First thing I see is comm services. Only down 0.8%. That is a huge win. That was our strongest sector of last week. It didn't go up, but it was one of the strongest sectors. And also healthcare. Healthcare down 1.6%. Okay, healthcare is a defensive sector, so I'm not going to take that one all that serious. What did worse? Real estate and consumer. That's where we're seeing a lot of the weakness here. Let's go into the charts one by one and give them all a score. First up is utilities. Take a look at utilities. Utilities is significantly off the bottom. We've run up and we're coming back down. Understand that pretty much every single sector is going to be really ugly, nasty. Almost all of them are going to be negative three. So what I'm going to do is because I don't want to have like 10 sectors all negative three. I want to talk about how some are stronger than others, even though they look terrible. Again, we want to be short the worst stocks in the worst sectors. And the sectors that are showing that they might not be the absolute worst. They're just bad. We want to do different trades in those sectors. So here is utilities. Look, it's not good. It's bearish, but you shouldn't be all out full bearish here. This is a mildly bearish sector. Next up, we have a communication services. Was it a plus one last week? Now we're down to a zero. Okay. It's still much better off than everything else we're going to look at. So comp service is still looking pretty good. Here we have real estate. Real estate had its move off the bottom. We came up and you can see we're all the way back down to the bottom. Now let's talk about this score. I'm giving this a plus or sorry, a negative two. This is a negative three. But as I said, if I was just going strictly off of everything, I'm telling you, there would be 10 sectors that were all negative three. So I'm trying to differentiate, okay, which ones are slightly terrible, which ones are terrible and which ones are horrible and terrible. This one here, what I'm going to use is the October lows. If the stock is still above or at its October lows, it doesn't get the worst of negative three, it gets a negative two. So here we have real estate negative two. 
Next up, we get to industrials. You can see we are right here. So we did not make a new low. We're close. This could easily go to a negative three on Monday, but where we close, it's at its October low. Next up, we go to healthcare. You can see the healthcare is actually above its August low, slightly. So healthcare is a negative two. Next up, we have financials. Financials looks pretty much identical to industrials. It's really hard to say that this is a negative two because it really is right at its support. But if we close on our lows, we could easily see negative three on Monday, but we have to tell it negative two at this point. And look, and you'll see it when we get here to something like a consumer. This is the consumer chart. All of a sudden now you see, oh, okay. Okay. This is clearly a negative three. We have busted down below this October low and we're actually lower than we've been for a long time. So consumer is a negative three. We come over next to tech. Tech has not broken below. And it's actually substantially above that low. So I'm going to give this a negative one. It, look, it's still bearish, still bearish. It's just not the worst thing I'm looking at right now. And then we come over to the materials sector. And here's another one. We have clearly broken down below our October lows. This one is a clear negative three. And last, let's take a look at energy. Energy last week was a, I think we gave it a, a zero and we're gonna bump it up to a plus one. So last week was zero, next up we're at a plus one. Here's where all the sectors were last week. Utilities that was at a negative three is going to move up. And then we have materials that was hanging on a negative two, it broke below its low. So we have materials and consumer as the weakest sectors. They were the ones that are below its August, sorry, its October lows. We had technology and comm services, they weakened a bit. They're still looking better than everything else, but they just didn't surge. They didn't really go up. And we did get a little bit of a bump up in energy, energy going from a zero to a plus one. It's still clear. Nothing has changed from last week. Energy, comm services, and technology are looking the best. Last week, we had utilities and consumer looking the worst. This week, we have materials and consumer looking the worst. Everything else is really looking to be more of a market perform. It's just doing what the market's doing. So if the market keeps falling, they're likely just going to keep falling with it. If the market bounces, they'll probably bounce about the same percentages as the market. But if the market does bounce, we expect that communication services and technology and possibly energy are really going to be the best performers. Let's go in and look at potential trades in some of these great sectors. First sector we are going to be looking at is the real estate sector. And you can see here, here is HST. This is host hotels. Take a look at this low base. We had this big fall. We had this big fall and now we're just going sideways. Now we're just going sideways. We are now breaking down below the low here. I've got a target of 15. So 15, 15, 16 bear call spread is going to be the call. Look, it's not a heroic trade. This is a just a single or a double. We're not looking for anything major, but a 1516 bear call spread in HST. Communication services. We know this has been one of the better sectors. And here we have Roblox. Now look, I'm too old to have kids that play Roblox. My son played, what was it? Minecraft. And I've always said Minecraft is crack for children. Apparently, Roblox is a better crack for children than even uh, Minecraft was. But let's take a look at this Roblox. Here's what we like about it. First of all, it's trading above the 50-day moving average. At Maverick, that's kind of our line in the sand. Is it above or below the 50-day moving average? If it's below, we're bearish. If it's above, hey, we can look to be bullish. And take a look at the candles. Thursday's candle of the market was an ugly red candle. What did we get? A green candle. Friday's candle was an ugly red candle. What did we get? A green candle. Now look, if the market keeps falling, even this one isn't going to be immune. It could easily turn back down. But if the market holds or strengthens up, these are the stocks that are going to do really, really well. So the question is, how do we want to play this? I'm going to look to play this through a diagonal call spread and a short-term diagonal call spread. 
I really wanted to do the 3033. Sorry, I want to do the 2932. That's what I wanted to do. The 2932, but there was no November 29s available. So I shortened it down to do the 3032. So on a diagonal call spread, the further out you go, and let me just draw a risk graph here. The further out you go, as far as the upper strike price, you get a very flat risk graph like this. However, the closer you go with your strike prices, you're going to get a risk graph that looks something more like this. So that is a risk graph here on this one with a 3032. You know, this upper point of probably 33 and a half, it means that if this thing really takes off, sorry, not 33 and a half, but probably like 38 and a half, if this thing really takes off and runs, there is a potential that this one could go into a loss. But again, we're playing this saying, we think it's going to be slightly bullish. We think it's going to be somewhere in this area here. And as long as it's in that area, we're going to be profitable. You can play this a little bit more aggressive if you want. I don't think the market is telling you to play anything aggressive. So I'm playing things very, very wimpy. My bulls are like plus one trades. I just want them to barely go up or just kind of go sideways and I'll be very happy. Look, if this stock goes sideways at 32, this is going to be max gain. That's max gain on this trade is 32. As long as it just hangs out in here, we're very, very happy to be long in Roblox. Moving on to the financials. As I said, the regional banks had a really ugly day. This is one of them. This is Fifth Third Bank, FITB. And you can see we got an earnings report after the market. And you can see they did not like that earnings report. We had a bear rally. We fall. We're now at new lows here. The big question is, okay, well, how low is this thing going to go? We don't know, but we know that the financial sector is not looking great. And especially the regional banks aren't looking great. We think 22 I got 22 as a target down here. So I'm going to take a look at the 2224 bear call spread. So this is just a simple two week trade it's saying, okay, I think it's going to go down to 22 or lower, but if it goes above 24, I don't want to have any more risk after that. I don't want to have any more loss. And then I can just sit on it. I've got two weeks. And just like I talked about with the Etsy trade, we spiked up that first week. Hey, I got a whole nother week as it fell all the way back down into my range. As long as we get a negative week next week on Etsy, looking good. Same thing with this. Got two weeks for this trade to break down below 22. And then let's finish this off with a play in energy. Last week, we had a slightly bullish sideways trade in energy. This week, we've got just a flat out sideways trade. Now, this is one of our favorite stocks at Maverick. We call it Schlumberger. Now, look, the actual pronunciation is Schlumberger. It sounds much fancier. Ironically, it is not a French company. It's a U.S. company. But years ago, uh, like 23 years ago, uh, when I brought Joe in to trade, a lot of you know Joe, he didn't know any companies. He really didn't know any names like this. And I was asking him, hey, what trade are you in? He's like, I don't know. I'm in this stock called Schlumberger. And I laughed and I'm like, oh my gosh, I can never call Schlumberger anything other than Schlumberger anymore. And so at Maverick, 23 years, we've been calling this stock Schlumberger. So here we are, Schlumberger, look at it, not going anywhere. We do like the energy sector, but we do think there's probably a little bit of a cap on the energy sector as the market is starting to tumble. I'm liking this stock right at 58. So right here, two week trade, butterfly, midpoint at 58. Again, lower at 55 and upper at 61. So as long as it stays in this area, it's going to be our profit area in here. Just two weeks, it can run out and come back in. It can run up and come back in. We don't care. We just want it to be at 58 in two weeks. If you have any trades you want to share with the rest of the member group, go to our website, log into the members area. You guys know where to go. Go to the forum. We'd love to see everyone chatting and talking about trades. Wrapping this up, bearish outlook. I said last week, I think the market is likely to bounce due to the seasonality pattern. And I said, it doesn't look like it's going to happen right now. And I could be wrong. Well, I'm officially here saying I was wrong. I said it on Wednesday. I officially said on Wednesday, I am wrong. This market is likely looking to go down to at least 4220. And below that, we don't really know where it's going to go. That's where we are. This market, every like six, eight months, 
we get these really intense moments where the VIX spikes, people panic, margin selling happens. This is just what happens in the market. We're at one of those points. If you're short, stay short. But if we get that real big tumble, that's when you want to start taking some of your profits off of the table. If you are looking to get short, I think you can get short, but you want to be really short term on any of your shorts. And if you're long, I hope you've got some hedges on because I think it's about to get ugly. This week, if you are long, you better hope and pray that those four companies come out with seller earnings and the market likes it. If that happens, this market is probably at a low. If it doesn't happen, we've got more to fall. And as always, focus on the sector strength and weakness. That's where you're going to find your best trades. That is the trading room. Thanks for joining me. Everyone have a great week. Goodbye, everyone. Mm -hmm.